The ACU men's basketball team looks to hold on to the second seed this week as they take on Nichols and Incarnate Word. I'm Max Preston. And I'm Grant Boone. We'll look back at a memorable night at Moody and ahead to this week's road games. This is the Joe Golding Show right now. Welcome to the Joe Golding Show from the JMC Network Studios at Abilene Christian University. I'm Grant Boone alongside ACU senior journalism major Max Preston and the head coach of the ACU men's basketball team, Joe Golding. Seven games to go in the conference season. ACU remains alone in second place, 19-5 overall, 8-3 in the league standings. Coming off, Coach, I still say, regardless of the outcome, one of the most memorable nights at Moody Coliseum in a long time. A two-overtime loss to first place Sam Houston State. We'll talk about the game itself in a bit, but what was the game like from your perspective, your vantage point there on the bench? Yeah, you know, I was just uh, extremely grateful uh, for the crowd that came out and, uh, you know, just there were so many uh, members of the community and mm -hmm. then our faculty and our staff and then our students really, really responded, I thought. So um, we obviously did not get off to the best of start uh, in that game, but um, I just thought the energy uh, at the beginning of the game um, was just was was very welcoming to see, you know, and, and our guys have done a lot of work. This has been a long journey, uh, especially for the seniors. It's been four years of a lot of work put in behind the scenes. We, we talk a lot to our guys about in the theater world, which uh, obviously yeah. you're a little familiar with, with Andrew is, uh, you know, like nobody ever goes to the dress rehearsal. There's so much work mm -hmm. that gets done behind the scenes in a dress rehearsal, but everybody comes to the play. You know, and so um, it just does much work as our guys have done to see them get rewarded um, with a great crowd like that. It, it was really nice to see, um, you, know, you know, Grant, you and I have talked a lot behind the scenes, and, and I mean this. If we want to build the kind of program here uh, at Abilene Christian, we've got to have crowds like that, and the crowd's got to continue to get bigger. You know, that's how you build a true program. Uh, you make home court just almost impossible to play at. And, uh, you know, if, if we want to continue to build this thing, which we are, we're nowhere near where we're going to be. This, this, this thing could get a lot better. And, uh, you know, as we continue to build our program, uh, if we continue to get the crowd support like that, um, it's, it's going to make this thing, um, you know, a, a lot of fun. So when you look at your remaining schedule for the season, you're either on the road or at home for the entire week. Do you prefer the schedule to be like this, or would you rather, rather have one road game, one home game some weeks? That's a great question, Max. Um, I, I don't know. Um, if, if, if there is a perfect way maybe in that because we obviously love home games <laughs> so I would probably lean more towards if you could get a home game uh, it's better uh, I just I think our guys enjoy playing in Moody and we've had great crowds and great support and we've played really well um, but uh, sometimes being on the road uh, you know we, we're closer to another opponent than we are probably getting back home we are yeah. you know so sometimes it makes it tougher uh, this week in, in general is really tough we were going to be out all week to give you an example um, we we're playing all the way in Nichols and then we're playing in Carnival Word. So by the time we got back home, it'd be time to turn around and go. They moved our start time up from Carnival Word from 7 to 3. So quicker, quicker time and a quicker recovery. So, uh, but we're not. So we're going we're gonna to fly out tomorrow. Our guys will go to class all morning so we don't miss any morning classes. We'll fly out. Um, we'll get to Nichols. And then after the Nichols game, we're going to stay the night in New Orleans. We'll fly out. I think we, our flight leaves at 6.02 uh, in the morning, which will put us back here at 10.15. We land in Abilene. So our guys can go to class in the afternoon. So they'll be here for afternoon classes Thursday afternoon. And then we'll go to class all Friday morning. And then we'll leave after uh, chapel, after Sing Song Chapel on Friday to head to San Antonio so, because there's nowhere to practice here. Obviously, we don't have a gym, so we're going to go down there and practice. So, you know, that's tough on, on our guys. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, academics here are tough too, you know. And so, yeah. uh, the, you know, that's one of the greatest recruiting tools we have is, the, you know, we, we sell all the time. We have the best academics in the, you know, in the Southland Conference. And so uh, our guys have to be in class. You know, we have another road trip coming up in a couple of weeks where we yep. play in Corpus and in Central where there is no choice. We have to stay out all week. So, um, you know, it's just tough. It travels tough, but our guys are used to it. You know, it's something yeah. that we, we get used to. But that's a great question. I never yeah. really thought about it, but I would probably take the, the home games. The glamorous yeah. life. 
of a student. Yeah, athlete. you know, and I think people people don't understand. You know, and that's a great example into the glimpse of an everyday life of a student athlete. Some people think these guys just ball, you know, and, and, and don't don't go to class. Well, we go to class. Uh, you better go to class here. And you're studying <laughs> in hotel <laughs> lobbies. Yeah, yeah, you know, Dr. Stewart's traveled with us a little bit. Our faculty athletic rep, and he's seen it. You know, you're in the you're you do study hall on the road. You're in airports studying. You're on the airplane, making sure your seats are arranged where you can study or have a study partner for for different classes. We have a bunch of business majors. We have a bunch. We used to have a bunch of communication guys. Um, you know, we have got Hayden House still doesn't know what he's majoring in, but uh, <laughs> I think he's majoring in everything. <laughs> but, he's taking one of each. Yeah, it's tough, and you, and you have to, you know, the, the good thing about being on the road is you kind of have a plan that's set, you know, but, uh, but the good thing about being at home is sleeping in their own bed and playing at home. Pool. Well, it is two games on the road this week, beginning at Nichols on Wednesday night. Always a tough place to go and play, and then at Incarnate Word on Saturday. We'll preview those games a little bit later on, but when we come back, we will recap last week's game, a win and a memorable night at Moody. This is the the Joe Golding Show. The ASU men's basketball team, after its first bye of the conference season, returned to action last Wednesday night for a road game against a Lamar Cardinals team that had won a pair of games on the road the week before and in so doing scored 90 and 87 points respectively. Yet, Coach, you stifled the Cardinals defensively. You won the game 75-64. The halftime lead, 33-31, was modest, only a two-point advantage. But you told me after the game, that you liked where the game was and how the game was being played. What do you mean by that? Well, I just liked where the score was. We yeah. knew that Lamar couldn't get in the 80s or 90s, and we were going to have a trouble winning that game. And so um, I, I thought with holding them to 31 points, you know, I felt like we could, were guarding them very well. We could make a few adjustments. You know, they were going to make adjustments, but I thought we still had some things that we haven't shown yet that uh, we could keep them uh, under 70. That was the goal. Mm -hmm. uh, not easy to do. Easy no. to say, very, very tough to do. They've got a very talented team. They're very well coached. Um, they're very scary, uh, you know. In fact, you and I talked off air, or on the air about, um, you know, when they were warming up. I had to, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't watch them warm up anymore. They, they look like a high major team. They're yeah. so athletic and yeah. long and big, and um, you know, obviously have a lot of guys that have played a lot of games in our league with Josh and Nick. So, um, you know, great win. I thought we guarded them really well and, and played it at our pace. We took care of the basketball. You really you know, did. Something we're very inconsistent with right now. We were so great for a majority part of this season of taking care of the basketball. Um, and, you know, but the, the one good thing on the road, when you take care of the basketball, you give yourselves a chance to win. And we did a great job there of taking care of the basketball. And, and that way we kept them out of transition. Well, they went and scored 82 and beat Stephen F. Austin in Nakadoshas yeah, by 15 the next game. You know, I mean, they're, they're that kind of talented, you know. And when you turn the basketball over and they can get out and they can score and they can get in transition, uh, and uh, they're, they're very scary yeah. uh, to guard. Only time we'll see them this year. Hopefully. In the second half of that game, you saw uh, Jay Frank get 20 of his 22 points mm -hmm. that night kept driving through the lane the defense was allowing him to get there and he's pretty much the big win you get that or big uh, reason you get the win against Lamar um, what does it mean for your team when your playmaker becomes your scorer for an evening yeah again Max I think it just all goes back man our guys have really bought into this man and it's it's what's made them special all year it just it's what the defense has given us you know and so uh, you know they're, they're late the defense was was locked up to Rick's and BJ, and they were worried about. They didn't want to leave Jelani and Jaron and those guys, or Farquhar, whoever else was in there. The bigger Joe. Joe played really well that game. Mm -hmm. um, that they were worried about them, which allowed Jay Frank get, to get right to the rim, you know. And so when they collapse on Jay Frank, he's been so good at throwing the ball out to Ricks and BJ. And uh, when the when the you know when our bigs have been played one on one, we've been able to score. When they trap our bigs, we've been able to throw it. So you know, when we go into every game like like I told Grant before the stand game. We've been guarded pretty much every way possible. We know now. Um, you know, what to kind of counters and different things to do on how. And the, and, and the key to the game is just figuring out how they're guarding us and, and what's open, you know. And so, uh, you know, they, they played off, Jay. That's no secret. People try to do that. And we had a few things that we've had been working on uh, for the last month or two uh, that we haven't really showed. We showed one of them late in the Lamar game, and it was able to, you know, kind of spread the floor a little bit and allow him to get to the basket. And so uh, we ran it. It worked and learned a long time ago, you know, if something works, you keep running it. And so we ran it again. It worked and ran it again. It worked. And so, um, you know, that's kind of that's kind of how it happened. Outscored them by 13 in the second yeah. half, uh, or, or record pardon, by nine, and you win the game by 11. Mm -hmm. Big win. Then you come home for a showdown that you didn't want to talk about on the show last week because you had Lamar <laughs> in your sights. But uh, you get Sam Houston State, first place Sam at 10-0, and ACU 8-2. and There was a lot of hype going into the game. It was a game that was televised on, on ESPN3. And uh, you get down like you did there in Huntsville, 20 plus points in the first half. You cut it to 14 at halftime. I thought that was important that it didn't stretch out. Instead, back to 14, which is not great, but better than it had been. 
Then early in the second half, you really asserted yourselves. It goes back and forth all game in the second half, and ultimately you get a three-pointer from Peyton Ricks from just north of the top of the key to send it to overtime. Moody goes crazy. You go to a second overtime. Sam finally gets you 90 to 85. So many things that we could discuss in this game. To me, what stood out, uh, maybe more than anything else, both teams' ability to take a punch. Mm -hmm. You took one early, came back. Mm -hmm. They took one late mm -hmm. and found a way. That's what good teams do, don't they? Yeah, you know, I, I, I think it was two of the top teams in the Southland Conference going at it, you know, in front of a great crowd. And, um, you know, that's what college basketball is all about. I think that's the first time our community, uh, our student body, uh, and everybody has seen a real Division One basketball game mm -hmm. like that. And so, uh, you know, you know, you talked a lot and people have talked a lot about, you know, how well Sam was playing and some similarities uh, between the two teams. And I take that as a compliment, you know. And if we want to continue to build our program to get on the level of Sam and SFAs and the Corpuses and the people, you know, New Orleans lately that have won consistently, we got to continue to play in games like that, you know. And, and every time we play in a game like that, we're going to be better for it. And so uh, I, I thought it was an incredible game. One of the better games I've been on the bench uh, and, and coached in as a head coach. I mean, it was just one play after another. Uh, one answer after another, uh, just big time plays, big time uh, atmosphere, uh, you know, a lot of game time adjustments that go in uh, during the game of, of different different things that were going on. That was a lot of fun, a chess match back and forth. And, you know, they just uh, they made the play late. Marcus Harris made the shot um, and uh, we didn't answer. It was the only time we really didn't didn't answer. So credit to him. It was big yeah. time. Big time shot by him. In fact, he made a couple. But, you know, we, we had our chances. You know, we had the ball um, in overtime uh, with a chance to win the game. Uh, you know, we had a two-point lead with 20 seconds. Couldn't come up with a stop. Then had the ball and couldn't come up with a basket. And the second overtime was back and forth. Uh, we just couldn't, couldn't, couldn't make the last one. So, you know, tie game, 30, 30 seconds, uh, you know, and he two seconds on the shot clock. He makes a big time shot. Yeah. You know, give him credit. Uh, get, they got great, good players. They're well coached. Really good. Uh, and, and they've I, been in a bunch of games like that. Yeah, they that have. And, you know, more than probably we have. And, and honestly, that's the first time at home our guys have played in a game like that. And so, uh, you know, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if that was the reason we came out a little bit like that or, if, you know, on our end as a coaching staff, we have to do a better job. Now that's twice we've come out and we have to give our guys a better chance to succeed in the first half. So, uh, you know, if, if, if we see them again, um, you know, we've played them twice now and, and we've got a lot of tape and, and, and we'll be ready to go. But, um, I thought it was a great night, yeah. great atmosphere, and uh, I, I was glad that it was out on our campus and our campus could enjoy that. I thought our campus did a great job. Too. I've, I've gotten so many compliments throughout um, on Sunday and Monday of just how great our job our campus uh, did of, of as many people. You know, I think it's the first time I've since I've played here. Maybe there might have been a game. I don't know. I don't. I don't think so. That there was ever a ticket line to wait to come in, to, to come in the game, and that that's that's what it should be like. You know, if we're going to build the kind of program that we want to build here, uh, that's what it should be like. And so uh, everybody's excited. But it, it can't just be a one-time deal, you know, and it, it can't, man. we got to continue to push the envelope, continue to push the bar. we got to continue to win games. That's the one thing that didn't happen. Everybody came to see us win, and that's what they do. They come to see you win games, and we got to win games like that. But uh, we got to continue to win on the road and continue to set up bigger games down the road here for us. So, you know, you mentioned maybe seeing them again. This game had such a big atmosphere, a postseason atmosphere, honestly. Mm -hmm. Two of the best teams in the Southland going at it. I asked you this after the game. What are the chances you see them in the Merrill Center in March? I would love to, you know, because that means we're playing for the NCAA tournament, you know, if we do, you know, or, or we're playing them for the chance to play for the NCAA tournament if we play them in the semis. Uh, so, you know, I, I would think they have a pretty good chance to win the league now. They got a four game lead yep. on us. Uh, they got a five game lead on, on most people. Everybody else, they own the tiebreaker with us. So they, uh, I would expect them to win the league and get the number one seed. And so if we're playing them, we're playing them in the semis or finals. Yep. And that's good for Abilene Christian, you know. And so, um, you know, we, we, I, I think, Max, you and I talked about this uh, before the game a little bit too, man. As a competitor, you love to play in games yeah. like that, yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, that we, we all got in, we got in this business to coach because we love to compete. Players get in, in, in uh, Division One athletics to compete against the best, and they're the best right now. And we got a chance to compete against them. And, and uh, if we get another chance to compete against them, great. I'll tell you this: there's a lot of work that goes into those two dates that are that are <laughs> yeah. four or five weeks away. They have a lot of work to do. Yep. We have a lot of work to do. There's really good teams in our league. There's a lot of parity this year. Um, you know, you see you see it every night in our schedule. Uh, there's a lot of basketball left to be played. Um, so, uh, you know, if it happens, it happens. But uh, if not, uh, I hope we're still there on, on that Friday or Saturday. And I don't care who we're playing. You yeah. know, that's, that's where we're trying to get Abilene Christian basketball at. And, and um, you know, we got a lot of work to, to do before that. One note, I know you've talked glowingly about the job that Jason Hooten has done. He inherited a terrific team that Bob Marlin had put together. And Jason was a part of it. He was an assistant coach. And, and taking something that's good and, and continuing 
to, to play at a high level and make them even better is hard. He told me before the game he thought your team is the most talented team in the league. And he said what Joe has done at Abilene Christian is even harder, I think, than what I had to do, which was take something that was already good. Joe had to build something from the ground up. So two great teams. I know a lot of respect between No, I've got a ton programs. of respect for, for, for Jason and what he's done there. And I said that before. I don't think he gets enough respect. Agree. Uh, um, back back there with, with as many 21 seasons as he's had. And we had a moment. Uh, I think it was the first overtime. Yes. Uh, I saw you talking to each other. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, we kind of looked at each other. And, and he just said, wow, man, you know, like – uh, you've done an incredible job, and, and I told him, man, you have too. And, yeah. and, and uh, you know, I think a mutual respect yeah. uh, between between the both of us. We've had a long history uh, with his Charlton days and my ACU days, and uh, he's learned from me. He had a great mentor in Lon Reisman, and then he obviously another mentor in Bob Marlin. Yeah. And, uh, he's done a great, jo- a great job of uh, putting his team in, in a position to win the conference. Very similar teams. Maybe they'll meet again. As you say, that's for another day. Mm-hmm. The important thing next is getting ready for Nichols, very talented team that the Wildcats will play down in Thibodeau, Louisiana on Wednesday night. We'll preview that game and the game against Incarnate Word on Saturday in just a bit. Stay with us. This is the Joe Golding Show. Hayden Farquhar, a Jimmy John's sub of the game regular, has been a big impact off the bench for the Wildcats. I had the chance to meet with Hayden and talk about his journey to ACU. So Hayden, you were pretty much a legend at Throckmorton High School. You won three football state titles and one golf title. You're also good in basketball. You're a three-time All-State selection. Uh, But how did you come to the choice of wanting to play basketball in college? Uh, That's a long story. Um, Going back to my junior high years, uh, my favorite sport was baseball. And uh, I threw out my elbow going into my freshman year. So I mean, that was out of the question. So I just really focused on uh, football and basketball in high school. And I loved it. I loved both of them. And uh, I just wanted to do something on my own. So, and my brother and my dad played college football, and I just wanted to go a different route. And so basketball was it for me. So you were a part of a very talented freshman class coming in. You had Jaron and Jalen, and I'd also add Jelani and BJ, even though they redshirted. How quickly did you guys come together and establish a chemistry? Uh, very quickly. I think the first summer we were here, uh, it just all of a sudden it just, it just clicked. The first night we were all together, we uh, came together in a room and just talked about all of our stories from uh, how we got here from high school, from junior high, and just a lot about life. And uh, every road trip we go on, me and Jay Frank are always rooming together since our freshman year. Every road trip, we're together. You come off the bench and you provide such an energy and just give the starters a breather. Have you really enjoyed your role as a guy that comes off the bench? First, no. I mean, coming from a small town, you're the main thing and just go doing all the sports and but whenever I first got here I, it was a little confusing to, to me but uh, as a season as the season progressed I mean uh, coaches kept talking to me about and talking to me about uh, know your role and just keep doing that and you do it the best of your ability and uh, you'll like the outcome and he was right I mean after the first three years I mean did, we didn't do as well as we thought we did or as well as we wanted to do but this year I mean it really clicked and now we're we're heading in the right direction. So as a senior, your team's having your best season since you've been here. How are you enjoying just seeing the hard work pay off as you exit ACU? It's amazing. Just uh, like I said, I just when we first got here, it wasn't like we wanted. But uh, just looking back now, just all the hard work, the the blood, the sweat, the tears, just over there in the weight room and on the court. I mean, it's all paid off, and we're just wanted to ready to go, ready to see what the uh, season entails. Take a look at the Southland Conference standings. With seven games to go for ACU, there are the Wildcats alone in second place. Nichols just knocked off New Orleans down in New Orleans on Saturday. So the privateers fall to eight and four, still in third place. ACU beat New Orleans, remember, in the opening game of the conference season, so they would have the tiebreaker. And those teams are, look at the race there with five and six losses. No one's out of it at this point. Uh, as only the top eight teams in the Southland Conference will make it to Katy and the Southland Conference Tournament. Well, the ACU men's basketball team hits the road again this week, a pair of games beginning Wednesday at Nichols. Coach, this is a new-look Colonels team, new head coach Austin Quanch, and a new-look roster from a team that tied for first place in the regular season last year. After scuffling a little bit in the previous couple of weeks, they rally, as I said, to win at New Orleans. 
I don't care where you beat New Orleans. It's always an impressive win. When you look at the Colonels, what do you see? Talent. Very, very talented. And uh, they, they kind of play very free offensively. Uh, they, they shoot a lot of threes. Uh, they have two big kids that are really good inside. Uh, but uh, they, they kind of um, – they're more perimeter oriented, uh, which is really scary because they, they can get a lot of shots up and they have the freedom to shoot that. Um, and so there's not a whole lot of defense you can do besides contest the shots. And if they're going in, uh, you're scary. Uh, it's a scary thing. You know, they've only lost one home game. I think they're 10 and one at home. And so Austin's done a great job. Um, you know, that's, uh, you talk about tough job, you know. Um, yeah. Richie just did an incredible job of winning the league last year and obviously getting the South Alabama job and uh, Austin uh, taking that thing over and they lost a ton of seniors. They had mm -hmm. a ton of yeah. uh, seniors and just to go recruit, uh, they, they added some grad transfers and got some Juco kids and uh, Austin's made them competitive again. And so uh, uh, we know this from our program the last couple of years, New Orleans is a tough place to win. We've lost our fair share of games there. And so to go in there, it was a hostile environment. I just watched it on tape. Uh, they, it was homecoming at New Orleans, so, so best crowd New Orleans has all year. And uh, Nichols went in there uh, and won the game. With a three late. <clears throat> With a three late. So uh, a, a ton of uh, credit to Austin and what he's done. Uh, I think he'll continue to build Nichols and, and keep them. Uh, tough. It's a tough place to play. Uh, they, it's kind of a smaller uh, gym, and, and they, they, they're, they're very loud in there, and they get after <laughs> it. And so uh, it's, it's a tough travel uh, for us. It's our longest road trip of the, of the year. So... Um, you know, we have our work cut out for us. We, we've got a lot to prepare for over the next 48 hours. And, um, you know, we're going to get their best shot. We have a ton of respect for them, and we're going to have to play our best uh, to give ourselves a chance. I know that. So you come back to Texas to face Incarnate Word Saturday in San Antonio. This is a team that's kind of struggling this year. They're also getting used to a new head coach in Carson Cunningham. But what weapons do they have that you have to make sure you take care of to win? Um, yeah, you know, I, I haven't seen him a ton and, and really locked in on him. Um, you know, I've seen him through scouts of other people, but you're always watching the other team and you're not really watching them as much. So um, I, know, I know he was an incredible player at Purdue. Um, he he's, uh, did an incredible job, I think, at the D3 level uh, or NAI level, wherever he was. Um, he's uh, he's going to build the right program at Incarnate Word. I, I don't think there's any uh, – I met with him this summer, got a chance to meet with him. He's a very uh, sharp man. Obviously, he's a doctor. Uh, he's, he's very intelligent. Uh, he's very smart. He's got a plan in place to build Incarnate Word. Um, they've obviously lost some tough games. I've heard they've had a ton of adversity and injuries, I yeah. think, and, and a depleted roster. They have talent on their roster. I know that because we played against some of their guys last year. Um, that, that, are, that are really good basketball players. Um, it, it's, it's turned into somewhat of a rivalry because we've made the move with them from D2 to D1. Um, I, I know they'll be ready to play against us. I know that. Um, it's, an, again, another tough place to play, a smaller arena. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a good crowd. It always is. Uh, when we, get, we usually when we have a good San crowd. Yeah, we do. And, um, you know, we bring some people there. And so it's always loud. And uh, we'll get their best shot. And uh, I, I think there's any – any lesson in this league this year so far is there's so much parity that anybody can beat anybody. Yeah. And if you're not prepared and ready to play, um, you're going to lose a basketball game. So we have a ton of respect. We will for, for Incarnate Word. We'll have a ton of respect for that game. And we'll, I, I know we'll have to play really well. I, I've seen scores of teams that have gone there and played, and they're not getting there. You know, they're losing. They might be losing some games, but it's not by much. I mean, right. they had SFA. They had yeah. the ball with a chance to win the game. So that tells you all you need to know. SFA beat us. So they've got talent, and, and they're a good team, and it's going to be a tough week for us. Um, you know, and um, you know, I worry about coming off the Sam game, and, and it's such a big game that, that we've got to get our guys focused in. We've been great all year. We've got great leadership, um, and, and our guys uh, have been able to turn the page from one game to another. I think our guys understand the importance of this week uh, on the road, and so um, we got to go find a way to, 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 to get our guys prepared and uh, find a way to get a road win. Most importantly, you're four for four this year coming off a loss and getting a win in the next game. In fact, stringing wins together after losses, and yeah. this may be the biggest yeah, challenge yet. Yeah, Although, yeah. coming back and doing what you did after the Stephen F. game was, was amazing mm -hmm. too. Now, most important, here, here's what everyone wants to know. Do you have any intel about Sub T's Sing Song Act this weekend? Uh, well, um, I, I, I got a little intel last week uh, that, that, that kind of uh, disappointed me. Which is? Well, I heard they were practicing. Right, heard, which is a no-no. Which is a no-no. Uh, <laughs> you know, you don't practice, so that, that's, that's not good. Um, so, in fact, I heard it was like their third or fourth practice, so that's, that's I, even worse. I have it on good authority uh, from one Nick Boone, keeper of the hat, 
sub T that they've had two practices. He said that was our second okay. and our last. And our last. Well, second and last. Still two too many, you know. Yeah. So uh, you all, know, all, all I'll say athletics is, <laughs> is you know athletics is different than sing song, Grant. You know, in athletics, I think you know, the way you practice and how much you practice and how well you practice goes to how well you perform, right? Actually, but, I think that is what sing song is, and that's why <laughs> sub T looks the way they do every year. <laughs> that's probably right. You know, but, but they're always the fan favorite. I was never able to participate in right. sing song, you know, but um, uh, either did the, my pledge class. There, I, mean, I don't yeah. know if you would call their participation. Uh, I will say this: if we do were, bring some humor, we do bring some energy. You do. One that. of these years, we're going to win. You know, if we'd have got Andrew instead of Nick to become to get in sub team, don't we, sell we, we, Nick's, we, Don't sleep on Nick Boone. Well, you told me that, so yeah, yeah you told me Nick's got some creativity. He's the lyricist. Music, anyway. I will but, say this: if there was ever a week to be on the road, this is a good one, actually. Isn't no, it's it? great. You know, and uh, you don't have to play somewhere yeah, else like Julie's having to play. Here's the deal, man. We support sing song. Yeah, absolutely. We do. Julie and I support sing song. I think it's great for our student body. Huge. Uh, I, I think it's a great event that, that brings the campus together. It brings people on our campus. It gets people excited about Abilene Christian, and it's a tradition that's gone on forever. So if we have to give up our gym space for a week, so be it. But uh, well, uh, in return, we want those students to support us. There you go. You know? Like they did so, Saturday. Yeah, like they did Saturday. And, and we've got guys that are involved in social clubs. We've got, we've got players that are involved in all kinds of clubs here on campus. Um, you know, we talked about we have guys getting degrees from every building on this campus, yeah, I think, true. in our locker room. And so our guys are involved in campus. They're involved in campus life. And we just continue to ask our students to support them like we support them. I, I, they'll be, I would say, the majority of our guys, I would be shocked yeah. if they're not there Thursday night. Right, you know? for the uh, dress for rehearsal. So for the dress rehearsal. They'll be there. I mean, yeah. they, uh, and, and so, uh, you know, we, we appreciate their support and, and we support them as well. So. Um, good luck to everybody. Yes, yeah, but especially so, so team will not. They, they won't win. The judges always, they always, they, the, the thing's rigged. Grant, can we yeah. be honest, man? I mean, I know. You the other directors were saying they had a lot of respect that. for Sub T and that they're really, really good. That, that's what they said. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, it, it, you, you, you have something else on your mind this week. At Nichols on Wednesday night. At Incarnate Word on Saturday, and we need a huge ACU alumni crowd, especially at the game at the McDermott Center on the UIW campus on Saturday. Doubleheader women first and men. You can listen to all of the men's games and that doubleheader on Saturday, women and men, on 98.1 FM. The ticket for Max and for Coach. I'm Grant Boone. Thanks for watching the Joe Golding Show. We'll see you right here next week.